a lot of times in spirituality there's artificial distinctions between the head and the heart and the longest journey you'll ever take is the 13 inches between your head and heart and da 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 da, da. well Jesus is a little more sophisticated thank goodness uh, so we don't have constantly the heads battling the hearts uh, and the heads are usually tied in with rationality and with thoughts and, and concepts and so forth. And the heart is usually where the, is associated with the feelings. But in this sense, thoughts, they do cause what you feel. Your thought system, the thought system that you believe in, I'm getting down a little further there because the beliefs are underneath the thoughts, but the thought system that you believe in determines your emotions and therefore determines your perceptions. So thoughts and cognitions cannot be ignored in the equation because they're causative. They cause your emotions. And this thought system of the ego and the thought system of the Holy Spirit really have no meeting point at all. They, they come from a different belief, they, they come from a different source. Uh, it's like when you bring darkness and light together, the light will remain. But these dark thoughts, these attack thoughts, have got to be raised up to awareness and raised up to the light where they will disappear. So the problem with thoughts and attack thoughts is hiding them. And that's why I would say communes, spiritual communities like this, we, we have a, a community today. We have a commune of sorts today. We're all communing together with one purpose and it's very holy. We're here to get underneath the surface because when we have emotions like anger or fear or guilt, there are thoughts that we're holding on to in our mind and we have not released those thoughts. And it is our responsibility to release those thoughts. How important is it to release those thoughts? Well, in A Course in Miracles, Jesus has a workbook with 365 lessons to take you to enlightenment or salvation. And the first 22 lessons of his whole mind training program uh, land on 23, which is the first 22 are only there for number 23. So 23 is quite important. He, he aims his first 22 lessons at number 23. And number 23 is, I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. It's that important. He, the other ones are just preliminary. It's almost like they're just building building, building towards a point of release. And that's really the key. If you can escape the, if you can give up the attack thoughts, you do escape from the distorted perceptual world. So what's under the thoughts? The realm of thoughts, the ring of thoughts, is the ring of belief. You can actually believe things about your thoughts that aren't true, which is kind of an interesting thing. And so an example of that is you can believe that your thoughts are ineffectual. And this is a common belief for human beings. Like, well, there's a big, vast world and cosmos out there, and I've got some pretty crazy thoughts <laughs> whirling around in my little private mind, but, but those little thoughts don't really have any connection to that vast cosmos out there. Actually, they do. They're more than connected. They are identical. They are more than connected. They are identical. The thoughts that you think you think, not in reality, but the thoughts that you think you think in terms of the dream world, and the world that you think you see are absolutely identical. It's not even an inner and outer thing, even though it seems experientially to be that you're thinking thoughts and maybe you're not looking out and seeing anything that is too close to what you're thinking. You, know, you may be having a, a bad day and even you have rage coming up and you have a thought that you would love to just kill somebody and then you think, well, but I'm not going to do it. 
because we think there's a big difference between behavior and thoughts. It's one thing to think that, but it's another thing to act it out. That's another big distinction human beings make. It's one thing to think it, it's another thing to do it. No, actually, it's, there's no distinction. You will never make it back to heaven or nirvana thinking you want to kill somebody. <laughs> it's not like God and Jesus are at the gates going, well, you had a lot of times you thought of killing him or her, but we're going to let that go. We're letting you in because you didn't do it. <laughs> Hitler did it, but you didn't. So we'll let you in. No, it's, it's that everything is unified. Everything I think and say and do teaches all the universe. So one unloving thought, one scrap of attack, I mean one tiny scrap of attack keeps you from knowing who you are. Keeps you from knowing your very identity because you were created as pure love, pure love, pure spirit, and anything short of that is just an illusion. It's just a trick meant to be released. So the belief is, you can see with this ring, the perception is caused by the emotions, the emotions are caused by the thoughts, the thoughts are caused by the beliefs. Oh, Holy Spirit, tell me there's something underneath the beliefs. <laughs> Tell me there's something at the core of my chart. The power of prayer, the power to free my mind, just as I seem to use it to imprison myself. Tell me there's something deeper still than beliefs. And that is prayer, that is desire. That's the power of prayer to free your mind. As Christ Jesus he gave us an example of freeing the mind by desiring God. The two, first two commandments, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and might. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, those are zooming us in to the core of what our desire is. And it's interesting that even a lot of the Ten Commandments, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Covet. I like that word. Covet. Ooh. It's getting, we're getting beyond behaviors when we get into covet. We all know that too. <laughs> we deal with so many things and forms and behaviors, but coveting, wishing, what am I wishing for? Well, imagine that the center of your mind is like an altar, and when that altar is clean and clear and empty, then the glory of love, the glory of God can shine through when the altar is clear and clean. But when you put things on that altar, you put things before love, you take that power of that point of, of wanting, of desiring, and you put something else there, then that's what generates what we call the cosmos. Let thine eye be single. It's talking about unified, unified desire. And what is unified desire except creation? Wow! That's like the portal that takes the mind back into the blazing lights of creation, the great rays, the light of heaven, the pure, abstract, unconditional, loving light that is our very being. That desire becomes the portal in the sense that when you let thine eye be single, when you have only, we'll say, love on the altar or only God, when, when your unified awareness, when your unified desire is there, then creation is, is where the journey ends. Or we might say better that where you see that there really was no journey. <laughs> you, never, you never left, you never went anywhere. You've always been that love. <laughs>